Hey everyone, my name is Nikki Young and this is Serial Napper, the number one true crime podcast for naps. I'm back with another true crime story to lull you to sleep or perhaps to give you nightmares. What would you do if you woke up one day with $1 million in your bank account because of some kind of weird glitch? Would you report the mistake to the bank or would you keep your riches? For Dan Saunders, a bartender from Australia, this is more than a hypothetical situation. It was a real-life dilemma he faced back in 2011. One night, as he stumbled out of a bar with only $3 in his bank account, he made a simple decision that would change his luck and his life forever. He stopped at an ATM on his way home to try to withdraw some cash from his nearly maxed out credit card and discovered a glitch in the system. Somehow, the bank machine, it allowed him to withdraw a lot more money than the balance in his account. He was planning to report this glitch to the bank, but when he tried to withdraw even more cash, he realized he had uncovered a loophole that would allow him to withdraw an endless amount of money forever, as long as he stayed on top of things. Why spoil a good thing? So instead of calling the bank to let them know about this glitch, he spent the next four months living a life of total luxury, buying suits, gambling in Vegas, and taking lavish vacations. However, as with most things, if something sounds too good to be true, then it usually is. The story of how Dan Saunders became an overnight millionaire sounds almost too insane to be true. So hang on to your hats and let's jump right in. Working as a bartender at a local pub in Wangaratta, Australia, 29-year-old Dan Saunders was like any other young man his age. He had recently moved to the area to support his fiancée's career, and they were trying to save up enough money to buy a home together. Unfortunately, Dan wasn't the greatest at saving money, and he had a little bit of a gambling problem. So when his friend Mark asked him to go out for some drinks after work one night in 2011, he was reluctant at first. He only had $3 in his bank account, but he agreed. Dan and Mark decided that Mark would buy the drinks the first half of the night and then Dan would cover the second half. By the time it was Dan's turn, he was fairly tipsy. He didn't have any cash on hand, so he had to walk over to a nearby ATM, which was operated by the National Australia Bank, or NAB. He knew that he only had a few bucks in his account, but he wasn't able to confirm the exact amount because the machine kept returning an error message that said, balance unavailable at this time. Dan tried transferring $200 from his credit card, which was nearly maxed out at $2,000, to his savings account. And then he received another error that said, transaction cancelled. This time, the machine spat his bank card out. At this point, Dan had no idea what was happening with the machine, but he was starting to sober up and he really needed another drink. So he tried to withdraw $200 out of his savings account, hoping that the money had in fact been transferred by some miracle. The transfer from his credit card to his savings account must have actually gone through because the machine spit out $200 cash and Dan went back to his night out without even giving it a second thought. Later that evening on his way home, Dan passed the same ATM that he had withdrawn the $200 from. He decided to try his luck again, just for fun, to see how much money it would allow him to transfer from his maxed out credit card. Like I said, he wasn't very good with money. He put his card into the machine and he tried to transfer $500 cash from his credit card over to his savings account. And then once again, he received the prompt on the screen that read, transaction canceled. $500 was more than what he had available on his credit limit. So he was absolutely shocked when he discovered the $500 over in his savings account. He tried it again, and this time he transferred and withdrew $600 in cash. Most surprisingly, there was no record on his credit card account statement that listed any of these cash transfers. Somehow, he had transferred a ton of money from his nearly maxed out credit card over to his savings account and was able to withdraw the cash immediately, even though there was no actual money available to be transferred. There was some kind of strange glitch happening with the machine, and Dan just happened to be the lucky recipient of hundreds of dollars of cash that night. 
The next morning when Dan woke up with a terrible hangover, his mind instantly went to the cash that he withdrew from the ATM. He quickly ran to grab his wallet to make sure it wasn't some kind of dream, and he found almost $2,000 in cash in his wallet. He called to check his account balance, and he learned that he now had negative $2,000 in the bank. Whatever had happened, there appeared to be a lag between what the machine allowed him to transfer and withdraw versus what he actually had in his account. So even though he didn't have $2,000 in his account, it allowed him to withdraw that amount. Dan went to work his shift as a bartender that day with every intention of spending the cash in his wallet, but he decided that he would pay it back later. Again, no harm, no foul in his mind, right? He enjoyed several rounds of beer with the money and then decided that he would gamble with the remainder. He thought to himself, if he won, he could keep the winnings and then he could pay back the nearly $2,000 that the ATM had wrongly dispensed. No one would be any the wiser. Unfortunately, after a few hours of gambling, Dan lost all the money. Now, Dan was going to have to work extra shifts to try and save up enough money to bring his account back out of the red. A few days passed since he had lost all of his money on a bet, and Dan found himself walking by that same ATM. He just couldn't help himself. He put in his card, and he tried to transfer $1,000 from his credit card to his savings account, which again was much more than what he had left on his card. He received the same transaction error message before checking his savings account balance and seeing that it was now minus $997. He tried again with another thousand transfer and his balance was back to the three dollars he initially had in his savings. This is when Dan's brain went into overdrive as he imagined how he could make this glitch work to his advantage. He began testing the waters, transferring mass amounts of money from his credit card to his savings account and then watching for when it would actually show up on his statement. All of the times that he was able to successfully transfer money from the credit card to his savings happened during the hours of 12 p.m. and 1 a.m. Dan would later learn that during this hour, ATMs belonging to the National Australian Bank would go into a standby mode, meaning the two networks were not communicating with each other. Rather, whatever money was requested to be transferred while the ATMs were in standby mode would just automatically transfer, despite not actually having the funds available. The reversal wouldn't happen until at least the next day, meaning one could withdraw an infinite amount of cash from the ATM machine during that hour, despite the funds not actually being available. With this information, a plan was hatched. Dan realized that all he had to do was stay one day ahead of the reversal. He would need to visit the ATM and initiate the first transfer between midnight and 1 a.m. Then the next night, he would need to transfer double the amount to ensure that his savings account didn't go into the negative. As long as he stayed ahead of the curve by one day, Dan had created a loop, an endless cash flow. Dan started out by purchasing simple things like a new refrigerator. He also shared some of his money with his girlfriend, how nice of him, by making deposits into their joint bank account. Remember, they were saving for a house. He simply told her that he had been working extra shifts and was just getting better at saving. Much of his free cash was actually spent at the pub, buying rounds of drinks for the entire bar or gambling on horse racing. His friends kind of began to wonder where all of this extra cash was coming from. Everyone knew that Dan didn't make very much money working as a bartender, yet he dropped cash as if he had just won the lottery. He decided that it was probably for the best to keep this secret about the ATM close to his chest, only telling a select few friends about what he had learned about this cash machine. Some of his friends scolded him, telling him that, it was wrong, it was illegal, it wasn't free cash, the bank was losing real money and they wanted no part of it. But others, they were happy with looking the other way. They just wanted to be able to enjoy the fruits of his crime without actually getting their hands dirty. When meeting new people, Dan told people that he had a job in finance, but he wasn't any more specific than that. And I mean, technically, that is true. He now had a job scamming the finance industry. 
It wasn't long before Dan began using this glitchy ATM money to live a life of luxury, as he had always dreamed of. Dan enjoyed a penthouse suite at the Crown Tower Hotel in Melbourne, where he threw lavish parties for anyone who wanted to attend. He drank, he gambled, and he cruised around the city in stretch limousines. Dan shopped at the finest luxury brand stores, where he would pick out a new designer suit to wear every day. He even chartered a private jet for $90,000 to take his friends on a trip to a private island in Bali. Dan felt like he was a rock star, but his girlfriend, she didn't really care for his new lavish lifestyle. She heard that he was spending large amounts of money on gambling and partying, and she broke up with him via text message. Unfortunately, money can't buy you everything. Oddly enough, his bank would call him every once in a while just to make sure certain transactions appearing on his account were really made by him and not someone trying to commit fraud on his account. However, they never once mentioned the odd activity happening between his accounts which was caused by this glitch. Did no one at the bank notice all of this missing money? Dan would say, quote, I had a few calls from the bank's security branch saying, we can see you tried to get $900,000 out four times at an ATM last night. I would say, how the hell would you get $900,000 out of an ATM? And they would say, yeah, there are limits. So we would laugh and then I'd say I was drunk and I must have been at the ATM pressing the wrong buttons. After a while of big spending, Dan began to feel guilty about all of the money he was taking, so he tried to share the wealth. He paid off his friend's debts, including a student loan, and he even gave one couple of complete strangers enough cash to take their dream vacation. Over the course of four and a half months, Dan would spend around $1.6 million. It seemed like the perfect plan to generate unlimited wealth, if he could keep it up. Although this glitch was allowing him access to basically an infinite amount of money, he still had to take action to ensure that he didn't get caught and that his balance, his negative balance, didn't catch up to him. So in order to keep the scam going, Dan had to ensure that he woke up each night to go to an ATM to transfer enough cash so that his savings account wouldn't go into the negative, each time having to take out double the amount, enough to cover his last transfer, and enough to make up the balance. If he missed just one night of transfers, his entire balance could catch up to him, and then everything would fall apart. I know it's all kind of confusing to understand how this whole thing worked, but basically every single night at some point during that one hour where the two systems weren't communicating with each other, he had to make a transfer of money. He had to transfer at least whatever he took out the night prior, plus whatever extra money he wanted for cash. Otherwise, his true negative balance showing all of his cash advances would finally be revealed. He had to make sure he had access to one of those bank machines every single night for that hour. Because of this, Dan was also beginning to experience anxiety, nightmares, and paranoia. He believed that it was kind of just a matter of time until the bank found out what was happening and what he was doing and called the police. Some nights he would wake up in a cold sweat after dreaming that SWAT was at his door ready to break it down and arrest him. He had literally stolen over a million dollars from the bank. After four and a half months of waiting for the other foot to drop, Dan decided that it simply wasn't worth the risk or the stress to continue going. It was time to put a stop to the scheme. One day, he just stopped doing the cash transfers, and his true balance caught up to him. Negative $1.6 million. He also decided to call the bank and let them know what was happening, talk about his account activity. They informed him that this was now a police matter, so they couldn't provide any information. Dan was sure that the police would be at his door to arrest him anytime now, now that the bank was aware of what was happening. He waited two months, no knock, and those months would turn into years without Dan ever hearing anything about charges being laid or a police report being filed. 
Can you imagine doing something seriously criminal, turning yourself in, and then having to sit around and just wait for your freedom to be taken from you? Because of all the anxiety, Dan wound up going to see a psychiatrist, but upon hearing Dan's story about the stolen cash and waiting for the police to arrest him, this psychiatrist basically threw their hands up in the air and said, I'm not qualified to do this. So he went to another psychiatrist who reaffirmed to him that he wouldn't feel free from this until there was a conclusion, some kind of resolution to this wild adventure he had been on. Unbeknownst to Dan, the National Australian Bank had decided not to pursue charges against him, despite the fact that he had stolen over a million dollars from them. Doing so would have meant that they would now have to reveal the story of how Dan Saunders had found a glitch in their system to steal money from them for over four months without ever getting caught. A serious privacy breach. A serious breach of contract meaning their systems weren't as secure as they like to believe. This should have been great news to Dan, but he didn't want to live the rest of his life feeling like the police could show up at his door with an arrest warrant at any time. So he decided to take things to the media. The bank would no longer be able to ignore him if his full story was out in the news. After appearing on a popular national TV show called A Current Affair, where he detailed how he stole $1.6 million from the bank, the police just couldn't look away. Three years after that first night he found the ATM glitch while out at the bar, Dan Saunders was arrested and charged with fraud and theft. He pled guilty, and he was sentenced to 12 months in a maximum security prison, plus 18 months of community service, and then ordered to pay back $250,000. Once he was released from prison, he returned to working a job as a bartender, making around $22 an hour, but he says he has no regrets. In a podcast interview with Vice, he would say, quote, I learned that, faced with temptation, it's easy to lose your true self, but I'm slowly getting back to neutral. I felt like Macaulay Culkin after Home Alone 2, like you're hot one minute and then you're sort of not the next, and it's a bit hard to take. There was definitely a hangover time when I thought, geez, maybe I should have gone to Spain after all. I think think the money and just the general good time made it made it sort of bearable, but I always knew that, you know, something, someone would come or something would happen, so it was quite baffling when they, when they actually didn't come. At the end of it all, I had to realise, you know, I had to say to myself, am I, am I the, you know, the international criminal who's just going to, you know, transfer the money away and, and never be seen again? And that's when I stopped doing it, because that's when I sort of asked myself that question, you know, are you going to be that person? And, You know, the answer was no. The only thing that was thought of was a good time because I thought it was going to end every day anyway. I didn't realise it was going to get up to millions of dollars or do anything like that. I didn't, I didn't, I thought it'd end after one week. I didn't think it'd end after, you know, four and a half months. And $1.6 million later. Yeah, I didn't know. The National Australia Bank has never officially commented on Dan's situation or what caused the glitch. But you better believe they've fixed the situation. So sorry to burst your bubble, but you can't take advantage of that glitch anymore. So again, I ask you, what would you do if you woke up one day with $1 million in your bank account due to a glitch? Would you report the mistake to the bank or would you keep your riches? And what if you knew the bank was never going to pursue legal charges? Would that change your mind? I'd love to know what you would do if you were Dan Saunders. That's it for me tonight. If you want to reach out, you can find me on Facebook at Serial Napper. I also have a true crime discussion group. It's called Serial Society, and I'll have the link in my show notes. I'd love to chat with you about this case and all of the other cases that I cover. You can find my audio on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. I post all of my episodes in video format over on YouTube, so go check it out. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'd love if you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm over on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Serial underscore Napper, and I post things on TikTok, Serial Napper Nick, and that's all one word. Until next time, sweet dreams, stay kind, especially in the comments. Bye.